let's get some reaction. Delighted to say we can speak to Alan Smith. Uh, Alan, uh, according to Mark Bullingham, he made the impossible job possible. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, th I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, he brought an enjoyment to the job, uh, took the fear out of it to a certain extent, all that the back treat back into hitting this tournament. But, um, yeah, players finally look forward to, to joining up, whereas before, at times, maybe they'd be a little bit reticent. But, yeah, he, he's proved that it can be done. I've, obviously, he's, he's had a fine, fine group of players to, to do it with. Um, but, yeah, my reaction, really, Bob, is one of sadness that he has gone because he's a, he's a fine individual. We all know that. Um, but going on to the World Cup, perhaps a, a step too far, probably given the, the, the nature of the performances, more than the fact we got to the final, getting to the final is, is a great achievement. But uh, the manner of the performances and the criticism he received, it, it clearly took that to heart. And you can only do this job for so long. It, it is wearing, it is taxing, it, it wears you down. Uh, and, and I think that's happened to Gareth. But we, we can only really thank him for what he's done for the national side. Yeah, are you surprised by the timing? Uh, we, yes, there's the Nations League kicking off in September. The World Cup qualifiers don't start till after that. His contract ran to December, maybe a few weeks away with the family, just reflecting. He's a deep thinker. So mm. why the announcement now? He, he could have had the time if he wanted to, to think it over, couldn't he? Yeah, well, I think he's thought it over over the last few weeks and probably before this tournament. Maybe he'd made up his mind, whatever happens, I'm going to step down, you know, leave when you're ahead to a certain extent. Uh, and for all the criticism, we've reached another final. So he, he leaves the team in a very good position. So perhaps whatever happened here, even if we'd have lifted that trophy, he may still have gone. I don't know. Only Gareth can answer these questions, um, but he's left on his terms. Uh, obviously, the FA would have been desperate for him to stay, and you can understand that because I do not know who the replacement is going to be. I do not know who, who in their thoughts. Uh, it's, it's a huge call now, and there's an absolute lack of suitable candidates for me to, to step into, into that job. So we'll, we'll wait with bated breath. Um, even though you have no idea, we, we will get into that. Don't you worry, uh, Alan. <laughs> um, uh, the, the greatest tribute, and, and actually that was kind of reflected in what Mark Bullingham was saying in his statement there, was something you touched on as well. England players want to play for England now. You remember those bad old days. What, what was it like? And, and what, how big a job was it to reverse that? So players actually wanted to go and be a part of this group. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how he did it, to be honest with you. I don't know how he did it, but he's a fantastic man-manager. I don't think you describe him as a fantastic coach, but the way he handled the players who came into the group, uh, the way he handled them as a squad, was second to none, clearly. He engendered that club atmosphere, uh, which, given where they were beforehand, you think of the situation following that dreadful Iceland defeat in France, and you're thinking, where are we going to go from here? There was such antipathy in the country towards the England side. So it's so easy to forget that, the position, the feeling in the country following that uh, tournament in France. So, yeah, I don't know. It's been really clever uh, by him, uh, psychologically, I suppose, uh, the way he's handled the situation, the way he's handled individuals, people now, they want to they wanna join that squad. I've got to throw a couple of... Because Mark Bullingham's statement was, was, was intriguing, that the stats in there... In, in what he said, in his, in his eight years in charge, he won more knockout games... Uh, than in the previous 50 years, which is an incredible stat. Uh, he also uh, went on to say that uh, England under Gareth Southgate have been ranked in the top five uh, for six years. Their longest ranking in the top five before that was seven months. So it shows the progression, despite his critics, that Gareth Southgate did with that group of players. No, I mean, uh, that's dead true. I mean, his critics will say, well, he's had that group of players with the talent available. He should be able to do that. But the gold, the so-called 
golden generation. Um, we know the names, Lampard, Gerard, Ferdinand and the rest, Rooney. They couldn't quite manage to do uh, what Gareth's done with his talented group. So, yeah, we shouldn't certainly um, temper those achievements because he's got a fantastically talented group of players because it, it isn't always possible, you see, at club level. Clubs spend millions and millions of pounds, but they still can't get the right blend. They still can't uh, achieve success. Um, so, yeah, there were, there were, there were lot, lots of things uh, to criticise, to wonder about during the tournament in, in terms of our structure, our shape. Did we know how we were playing, how we were going to go forward with the ball, without the ball pressing and all the rest of it? Um, but those stats that Mark Bullingham mentions, they are valid, extremely valid. Is, is, is there a sense then that people were just out to see the negatives, that every silver lining has a cloud as far as they're concerned? And, and was he underappreciated in what he did with England? Well, I, I think it was the tournament, wasn't it, Rob, whereby we didn't play well, you know, 40-odd minutes against the Netherlands, and that, that was about it, probably, a little snatches against uh, Spain. Um, so... It would have been interesting if we had applied well and maybe we unluckily lost to Spain in the final, whether his feelings would have been different. Um, but there's no getting away from the fact we we just didn't reach anywhere near our capabilities in this tournament. That was the disappointing thing. But the fact that you know most of our top players didn't reach their potential, we still got to the final. That that says a little bit about the resilience of the team, doesn't it? And and the winning mentality, the, the grit, determination. So he, he's instilled that within this side. Uh, can another manager do more with this group of players? Maybe they can, maybe they can, can but it, you know, people talk about Jurgen Klopp and, the, and these great club managers, but they're working with their players day in, day out. And just to have a few days with the group every few months. It's a totally different story and a totally different mindset, I think, for any manager coming into a national side. So the choice of that successor, obviously, is a difficult one and a vital one. OK, well, let's get on to that while I've got you here. Um, the two names as far as uh, leading uh, managers who are English is concerned seem to be Eddie Howe, Graham Potter. What would you make of either of those two? Well, first and foremost, Rob, I'd say, yeah, we do want an English manager. I don't think we want to go back to the times of, of Sven and, and Campello. It, it just didn't feel right. You know, it didn't get us any further down the line. And, and I do think we should go for an Englishman. I hope they will. I mean, talk about Eddie Howe. Does he want to leave Newcastle? He's a, he's a young manager. He's, he's gone into a club, obviously, that they're aiming for the stars. Does, does he want to move away from that? Um, Potter... Again, you know, big question marks, I think, because of what happened at Chelsea with him when he was handling big players. I know it's difficult there at Stamford Bridge, but, you know, that didn't do too much for his CV. So, yeah, you, you, you can bandy these names about, but first and foremost, those people have got to want the job, and secondly, they've got to be up to it. Uh, so, I, I just wonder, from that statement, it sounded like they have got somebody in mind if it's as an in to him. So we'll, we'll we'll watch this space. I mean, obviously Southgate came through the the FA, the under twenty ones, Lee Carsley. But is Lee Carsley ready to manage the senior team? I mean, I wouldn't have thought so. But we'll see what the FA do. Yeah, well, well Lee Carsley would seem to fit what that statement was saying there, wouldn't yeah. it? And yeah. and if we look at Gareth Southgate, he he made that jump. But also if we look at Spain and De La Fuente before the tournament, it was De La Who. Uh, and, and has yeah. now gone on to, to, to lift the trophy. So is that a possibility then? Well, it, it may be, yeah. And, and at the end of the day, it isn't so much about a manager at the international level, is it? It's about the players and just giving them a structure to go out and perform. Um, so, it, I mean, it's a good point about the Spanish coach. Not many of us have heard of him at all uh, going into this tournament, but he had a fine group of players. Um, obviously, you've got to have a bit of authority. When you walk into that dressing room and you start talking, if you lead Carsley, players have got to want to listen and they've got to want to believe what you're saying. You've, you've got to have that to you. So, I mean, I don't really know Lee Carsley as a coach, what, what he's like, one-to-one -one, on the training ground, in the dressing room. But, you know, that's the FA's call, isn't it?
Yeah, uh, and that then leads on to what you're alluding to. I mean, who would really want this job? Because you effectively, what we're saying is not only have England got to go on and win the World Cup in, in 2026, but they've got to do it with a mixture of sort of Brazilian, Spanish flair to go with it as well. So, I mean, it, it, is, it is an impossible ask, isn't it? it? Well, it is really, yeah, it is. Uh, the only route to success is, is winning the trophy, which uh, obviously is not easy and it won't be easy in the World Cup. So those are the standards that uh, Southgate has set. It pays well, number one, which is which is a big tick. But um, everybody in world football knows the criticism, the scrutiny that an England manager receives, and it normally only ends one way. And I think that's why Gareth will be pleased that he, he walked out on his terms rather than being shoved out the door, uh, which most managers are. Um, but, yeah, how attractive is it? We'll see. I mean, if you're a proud Englishman, you know, I think you have to be at a certain stage of your career to think, OK, I've done it at club level. Let's have a go now. I've got the experience. Let's have a go with the England side. It would be the proudest moment of my life. But I don't think those candidates are out there that fit that criteria.